We've all seen these out on the roads in the winter, gritting lorries. And when we do see them about, or we might think there's trouble ahead. Highways agencies and councils have quite a job on their hands when wintry weather strikes, trying to keep one step ahead and keep us on the move. Well, the gritters may be in the front line of the operation, but it all starts with a different group of people doing a job that I'm very familiar with, weather forecasters. This is no ordinary forecast, it's actually pretty specialised. So I've come to the London HQ of Meteor Group, a private weather company which provides winter road forecasts for several authorities across the country. I'm joined by Paul Knightley, forecast manager. Uh, Paul, give us an idea of the scale of this operation. Well, we're forecasting for around about 100 authorities across the United Kingdom, serving over 500 roadside weather stations in an operation that spans the 1st of October to about the 30th of April a 24-7 operation through that time. So it really is a big operation for us. So the forecasting process starts by taking a look at the large-scale weather pattern. So here we have the next nine days view of the ECMWF weather model, just showing sea, mean sea level pressure. So big area of high pressure to the south of the British Isles at the moment with a west or west-northwesterly flow, cold front coming southeastwards across the, uh, the UK at the moment. So for tonight's forecast, we're looking at colder air being introduced after a very mild couple of days. We ne now need to look at the forecast in a bit more detail. So we take the large scale global model and bring it down to a much more local model by what we call MOS, MOS, Model Output Statistics. And this combines the skill of various weather models um, and the observational history from various weather stations across the UK, including all the road weather stations that we look at, a couple of years worth of history. And then you really get down into the local detail, um, sort of hyper-local forecast then by taking into effect the, the climatology of the site. Is it a frost hollow? Is it an exposed hilltop? Well, the MOSS system sort of knows this, in inverted commas, because it's contained within the station history. So you're taking those site-specific forecasts and then you feed them into a different type of forecast model, a simulation, don't you? We feed the information into a physical energy balance model um, that for, the, for the road surface temperatures. So it takes into account the sort of the heat sources, so the sun shining out in the day, for example, or the heat coming up from the subsoil on a, on a winter's evening and also the heat radiating out of the road surface. So it's the balance between the incoming radiation and the outgoing radiation. And when the incoming radiation exceeds outgoing, the road temperature goes up and vice versa. And the road model takes these site-specific forecasts into account, takes our edits into account, takes the time of year, so the angle of the sun, how much radiation is coming in, and then comes out with um, a effectively a graph of the road surface temperatures and other temperatures that are important over the next, well, up to eight days ahead actually. And we can see the output of the road model on this screen here and we can see the minimum temperatures for the coming night. So as you might expect, red equals danger, so the, the colder sites are shown in red here and yellows and sort of ambers are slightly warmer sites. So we see across southern areas especially a, a pretty cold night actually with uh, quite a lot of uh, sites falling below zero, so we would expect um, some gritting operations to go on tonight. If the forecast is say 0.9 or 1.0 degrees Celsius, a client might choose not to salt on a particular night, simply to, you know, because it costs a lot of money to go out salting, it's quite damaging to the environment, but they have to be pretty confident in that forecast. So we need to also explain to the clients how confident we are, you know, what, what's the margin of error on a one particular night? Because you can have two forecasts with exactly the same temperature profile. And one, we might be very confident and say, actually, you know what, we think within 0.2 or 0.3, we're going to be right. And we will be. But there'll be other nights where the cloud is highly variable, those kind of anticyclonic gloom conditions that we all love in the winter, um, where it's very difficult to predict exactly where holes might appear in the cloud. And on those nights, we would suggest to the client the variability is higher and perhaps it's not a sort of done deal in the forecast. Once we produce the forecast, we then transmit it to our Roadmaster website, which is where our clients view the forecast information for the coming days. So we start off with some forecast text, so that covers the next few days, even up to 10 days ahead, um, giving them trends at that distance and more specific information for the shorter term. We then have a table of information here, which gives us, for example, the minimum road surface temperature and any other hazards. 
So for the coming nights, we're dropping down to about minus two and a half, almost minus three degrees in this uh, area. But the roads are expected to be mainly dry, so that's an interesting situation there with cold roads, but mainly dry roads. The Highway Authority may well want to plan action, you know, somewhere back here in the, in the late evening to ensure that all the roads are covered in salt by the time the temperature drops below zero. Sometimes the tables can look much more interesting and here's an example um, of a particularly tricky night across parts of uh, Western Scotland. And here you can see that the hazard table has many of the uh, rows filled up, including the snowfall row. And where you see the black colouring, the clients can choose the levels at which the colours change. This indicates snowfall of over one centimetre per hour, which is pretty heavy. And if we roll down to the more um, uh, in-depth view, well, I think you don't necessarily have to be an expert to see that with red and black colouring across the graphs in these areas, you can expect a great deal of uh, severe wintry weather. And I can also kind of unfurl these and see the amount of snowfall, and that's going up to 20 centimetres uh, in total just in 24 hours. So there would have been the need for snow ploughs as well as salting in this operation. This is not just an operation that is send the forecast and be done with it. It's a 24-7 operation through the winter months. And so our team of forecasters here is monitoring the conditions throughout and using tools like this to keep an eye on what, not only what the forecast temperatures are, but what are the current temperatures on the roads. And when those road temperatures start to deviate, you know, let's talk about the variable cloud night, um, we suddenly see a temperature starting to drop quickly down towards zero. We need to get on the phone, alert the client as soon as possible in order for them to update their action plans and perhaps go out salting when, when they weren't planning to. So obviously, you know, we want to keep that to a minimum, but the weather is still you know, inherently tricky to predict at times, for example, showers or variable cloud amounts. And so there are nights, of course, where we have to update the clients and unfortunately let them know that it's not quite going to plan. We're just off the M4 in Berkshire now at a depot near Reading. This is where the trucks head out to grit the roads on West Berkshire Council's patch. Uh, my name's Russell Crockford. I'm Principal Engineer for West Berkshire Council Highway Maintenance Team. Uh, part of my remit is to look after the winter maintenance for the District of West Berkshire through our term maintenance contractor Volker Highways. And as part of that, I'm also one of the duty standby officers. So when the forecast lands on your desk, what sort of decisions do you then have to make? Well, it's done in a tabular form with a text. We then have to interpret that data uh, to assess if we need to go and at what time we need to go. Obviously, its timing is critical. It takes about two and a half to three hours to complete a run, but it also takes about an hour to two hours to mobilise. So we have to take that into account so we can be gritting before the onset of sub-zero temperatures. So it's actually quite technical then. Um, it's not just a matter of it's going to be down below freezing tonight, we're going to go out and chuck some salt around, job done. No, no it's, sometimes if it's, if it's dry and it's not going to have any rain, then yes, it's quite clear cut. But a lot of the times, and especially this season, uh, with bouts of rain, it is, it is a lot more technical. So you do have to judge those timings and the amounts quite accurately. And how does snow change the operation? Snow, I mean, we change our routes when we snow. We've got, we've got a slightly different route. We do 10 routes rather than nine because it picks up a slightly different network. But again, we want snow, um, we want salt before the snow falls. We then have to assess what levels, what accumulations of snow we're going to get. Because if we get in towards the two, two and a half inches, we will attach snow plows to, to deal with the snow at the same time. So how much does a gritting run actually cost? For a standard 10 grams per metre square run, it's approximately £2,000. Obviously, if we increase that to 15 grams or 20 grams, there is a cost implication as well for that. So how vital is the forecast for you? Absolutely vital, uh, especially the, uh, this day and age. The forecast and the weather fronts we're getting are much more erratic we need that detailed information so we can actually analyse what's going to be happening so we can go when we need to go but not waste if we don't need to. And what are the worst sort of conditions, the ones that really keep you awake at night? 
Uh, we've had a lot of bouts of heavy rain, um, which has then frozen. We've had rain again afterwards. You then get another, another sort of like freeze. It's those ones that really keep you on the toes. That's when we sometimes have to go once in the evening, once again in the morning. And we haven't had it for a few years, but also freezing rain. When we, when we, when we have that forecast, that always puts everybody on edge. As a weather forecaster, I had to develop quite a, a thick skin because on the odd occasion, when you get it wrong, you do get a lot of flack. Is it the same in your job? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Everybody expects you to make the right decision 100% of the time. We do try to, but obviously the weather is very changeable. Forecasts will change at very short notice. Um, we have to react to that. Sometimes it can be too late to react, uh, especially if temperatures are going to dip down for such a short period of time. By the time you've mobilised and got the salt down, it's then washed away, but in the meantime it has frozen. So yeah, it, it, people's expectations are always very, very high. Michael Asaria is a supervisor for Volker Highways, the company contracted by the council to do the gritting. So it sounds like it's quite a technical business, perhaps more than people would realise. It is. I, I, as general public, I've been involved in this now for so many years, but thinking back, you just see a gritter going by and not much to it. However, decision making is key and we have to follow those, those decisions made and, and so on and do it right. And what are the most difficult conditions to operate in? There's two types of difficult conditions, one being straight after, straight after rainfall. Obviously there's black ice, um, temperatures drop quickly, motorists not necessarily aware, so there's one to watch out for. The second being snow events. Obviously the snow compacts underneath the tyres, causes these sort of vehicles as well to slip and so on, so our drivers have to be trained, drive very cautiously, being mindful of those around. Does snow change the way you have to operate? We would take more precaution. We'd allow ourselves more time, more distances in front of, or behind other vehicles, sorry. Um, we, would, we would allow for more salt spread over the square metres and so on, up to 40 grams. Um, and just, just take our time really. Do you get a sense of satisfaction from helping to keep the roads safe in winter? Yes, yeah, so I speak for all of us that, that all of us are passionate about what we do. We're very committed. Um, we know the importance of sorting the network. Um, the fact is that we are the emergency response in that term. If we, were if we were unable to sort the network, then the issue is that the roads would be unsafe and um, unsafe for motorists causing, causing uh, accidents. Yeah, so take it very seriously. So there you are. Next time you see that flashing yellow light as the gritters sweep by on a cold winter's evening, Spare a thought for those people working hard behind the scenes to try and make sure you can safely get to work next morning. <laughs>